This is a jobs issue. This is not an abstraction. If the United States government, for the first time, cannot pay its bills, if it defaults, then the consequences for the U.S. economy will be significant and unpredictable, and that is not a good thing. We don't know how capital markets will react. But if capital markets suddenly decide, you know what, the U.S. government doesn't pay its bills, so we're going to start pulling our money out. And the U.S. Treasury has to start to raise interest rates in order to ca uh, attract more money uh, to pay off our bills. That means higher interest rates for businesses. That means higher interest rates for consumers. So all the headwinds that we're already experiencing in terms of the recovery will get worse. That's not my opinion. I think that's a consensus opinion. And that means that job growth will be fur uh, further stymied. It will be further hampered as a consequence of that decision. So that's point number one. Point number two, I want to address uh, what I've been hearing uh, from some quarters, which is, well, maybe uh, this debt limit thing is not really that serious. We can just pay interest on the debt. There, th this idea has been floating around uh, in, in some Republican circles. Um, this is the equivalent of, of me saying, you know what, I will uh, choose to pay my mortgage, but I'm not going to pay my car note. Or I'm going to pay my car note, but I'm not going to pay my student loan. Now, a lot of people in really tough situations are having to make those tough decisions. But for the U.S. government to start picking and choosing like that, is not going to inspire a lot of confidence. Moreover, which bills are we going to decide to pay? These guys have said, well, maybe we just pay the interest on uh, uh, for bondholders. So are we really going to start paying interest to Chinese who hold treasuries? And we're not going to pay folks uh, their Social Security checks? Or we're not going to pay uh, to veterans for their disability checks? I mean, wh which bills, which obligations uh, are, are we going to say we don't have to pay? And uh, uh, last point I want to make about this. Uh, these are bills that Congress ran up. The money has been spent. The obligations have been made. So th th this, isn't a, this isn't a situation, I think the American people have to understand this, this is not a situation where uh, you know, Congress is going to say, okay, we won't, uh, we won't uh, buy this car or we won't take this vacation. They took the vacation, they bought the car, and now they're saying, maybe we don't have to pay, or we don't have to pay as fast as we said we were going to, or that, that's not how responsible families act and we're the greatest nation on earth and we can't act that way so this is urgent and it needs to get settled so is August 2nd a yellow light or a red light? I, I, I think people should think of oh, look I'm the president of the United States and I want to make sure that I am not engaging in scare tactics and I've tried to be responsible and somewhat restrained so that folks don't get spooked. August 2nd is a very important date. And there's no reason why we can't get this done now. We know what the, what the options are out there. This, this is not a technical problem any longer. This is a matter of Congress going ahead and biting the bullet and making some tough decisions. Because we know what the decisions are. We've identified what spending cuts are possible. We've identified what defense cuts are possible. We've identified what health care cuts are possible. We've identified what loopholes in the tax code can be closed that would also raise revenue. We've identified what the options are. And the question now is, are we going to step up and get this done? And, you know, uh, Malia and Sasha uh, generally finish their homework 
a day ahead of time. <laughs> Malia's 13, Sasha's 10. It is impressive. They don't wait until the night before. They're not pulling all-nighters. <laughs> They're, they're, they're 13 and 10. You know, Congress can do the same thing. If you know you've got to do something, just do it. Um, and and, uh, and I've got to say, I'm very amused when I start hearing comments about, well, the president needs to show more leadership on this. Let, let, let me tell you something. The, after, right after we finished, dealing with the government shutdown, averting a government shutdown. I called the leaders here together. I said, we've got to get, done, uh, get this done. I put Vice President Biden in charge of a process that, by the way, has made real progress. But these guys have met, worked through all of the issues. I met with every single caucus for an hour to an hour and a half each. Republican senators, Democratic senators. Republican House, Democratic House. I've met with the leaders multiple times. At a certain point, they need to do their job. You know, and, and so this thing, which is just not on the level, where we have meetings and discussions and, and we're working through process, and when they decide they're not happy with uh, the fact that at some point you've got to make a choice, they just all step back and say, well, you know, the president needs to get this done. They need to do their job. You know, every day I get letters from folks all around the country who show incredible resilience, incredible determination, but they are having a very, very tough time. Um, they're losing their homes. Some have lost their businesses. Some have lost work and have not been able to find jobs for months, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, and, and they feel some desperation. And some folks who are working just are having a tough time paying the bills because they haven't seen their wages or incomes go up in 10 years. And the costs of everything else have gone up. And every day that weighs on me. Every minute of every day that weighs on me. Because I ran for president precisely to make sure that we righted this ship and we start once again, creating a situation where middle-class families and people who aspire to be in the middle class, if they're working hard, then they're living a better life. Now, these structural changes in our economy that have been going on for a decade, in some cases longer, um, they're not going to be solved overnight. But we know what to do. We know that if you know, we are educating our kids well, then they're going to be more competitive. We know that if we uh, are investing in things like infrastructure, it pays off. I was in Alcoa in uh, Iowa, uh, one of our most successful companies. They took a big hit during the recession, but they still invested $90 million in new equipment in a plant that makes air, uh, airplane wings and uh, parts for automobiles. And they've bounced back. They've hired back all their people. Uh, and are increasing market share because they made those investments. Well, just like a company like Alcoa, America's got to make some investments. We know that we've got to get control of our deficit. Uh, th th there, are, there are some, some things that aren't going to solve all our problems but can make progress right now. And the question is whether or not Democrats and Republicans are willing to put aside the expedience of short-term politics uh, in order to get it done. And these folks are counting on us. They, are, they, they desperately want to believe that their leadership is thinking about them and not playing games. Uh, and, and, and I think that if, if all the leadership here in Washington has the faces uh, and, and, and the stories of those families in mind, then we will solve this debt limit issue. We will put in place steps like 
a payroll tax cut and infrastructure development. Uh, we'll continue to fund education. We'll hold true to our commitment to our seniors. These are solvable problems, uh, but it does require us just getting out of the short-term uh, and frankly selfish uh, approach that uh, sometimes uh, politics breeds. And we've got to think a bit long-term. Right. Thank you very much, everybody.